Hello folks, so in January of last year, 2023, I published a video where I was beginning to get to grips, first of all, with using KiCad for PCB and schematic capture. And I decided that the best way to learn that was to take on a super ambitious project which was the idea of designing an open inverter board uh, to run the Tesla Model 3 drive unit. Now, due to the fact that I have about a million projects, um, various other concerns, that ended up uh, getting somewhat stagnated time of making this video now it's August 2024 so 18 months hence and I'm just getting back to having a look at it now primarily the reason that this project has seen a jump start is the fact that in the last few months um, someone has jumped in on this project uh, with me and has started doing some uh, pretty amazing work on it, which we're going to look at here now in excruciating detail over the course of this video. So don't say I didn't warn you, this one is gonna be long, boring, and well, boring. So do yourself a favor, press the pause button, go up to the old search bar, type funny cats and press enter and you will be safely taken away from this nightmare but if you wish to hang around then don't say I didn't warn you all right so Tesla model 3 uh, drive unit hacking project very quick recap for those of you who may be just joining us um, the model 3 drive units have a single PCB in them. So it's a single board that encompasses the logic and the uh, power stage driver, the driver stage for the power stage on the same PCB. And what that means is we cannot take the usual approach with it of just replacing the logic board and then maintaining the um, the OEM uh, hardware for driving the gates and reading the various uh, things that we need, like resolvers and things like that. Now, I spent quite a bit of time myself reverse engineering the um, board specifically around the Texas Instruments uh, C2000 microcontroller uh, that they use on there, which those of you that might want to know is this big square here now when I last finished uh, which was last year I was working on another idea for this I would safely say I'm not going to say we know what every pin does but I'd say we know what 95 plus percent of the pins um, on this micro do and there's 177 of them so Initially, from a hardware modification point of view, uh, my idea was to remove this device and make a small board uh, that would go in here and replace it and would carry the STM32 F1 um, that will be familiar to the open inverter um, system. Now I know that I'm probably going to get a load of comments and suggestions about how I should do this or shouldn't do this um, from people that won't have been following the project to, de to date. So but first of all, I suggest if you are new to this, go back in the catalog and have a look around because I've tried a lot of things here. Now, last year I did one that actually works quite well. 
um, and I've ran the drive unit on the bench. I've got the drive unit installed in a car. But the problem is, okay, and this is the part that I have to try to get across. It's not just a question of me packing one or even two drive units for my use and then coming on here and saying how brilliant I am. Oh, I've hacked the Model 3 drive unit and drive around and do burnouts. It's so that there is a open source and readily available solution that you can use not just me or someone with advanced electronics skills soldering skills that kind of thing so unfortunately my quest um, to replace the C2000 micro here um, and leave the rest of the board um, intact um, has kind of, I will say, I won't say it's completely dead, but at this stage, I think I've exhausted pretty much every reasonable option uh, for doing that. So, that leaves us two more um, options here. The, let's call it option two, um, is to replace the software that runs on the C2000 here. Uh, with a port or a version of the open inverter firmware and there is indeed a very talented gentleman in the UK working on that project now uh, for the last few e e years um, it's still very much active but like a lot of these things it is a labor of love and I think he's doing it just because he can, not because it's, you know, some uh, massively financial gain to be had for this. Um, I'll leave that to me so that I can retire to Lanzarote on your hard-earned cash. But, basing that project is still probably a year plus away, um, but it is progressing and will certainly see the light of day and like a lot of the things um, that happen particularly around the drive units and the Tesla parts the open source solutions are very rarely if ever the first to become uh, available uh, but they do become available it's just a question of resources and time for those of us that are involved in these projects so that is ongoing and that leaves us one more uh, choice and let's kind of call this the nuclear option and this is the one that I made the video about there um, in January 23 and that is where we say sod this and we re replace the entire PCB. So you'll see in this, in the photo part of this um, view here, that's exactly what's been done. This is the PCB that's been removed from, it's actually a front drive unit in this case, but they are broadly the same. If you want to know more about the differences in them, Again, I suggest watching some of my previous ultra boring videos on this subject. So, um, where we're at now, as I said, is that um, a friend of mine in the United States has jumped on board and uh, over the last week or so has done an absolute mountain of work on this board. Um, the hardest part by far is the gate driver section um, because these silicon carbide MOSFETs that are used in the power stage of the Model 3 and probably other ones that will be coming down the line, um, not, they don't quite behave the same way as standard IGBTs and so forth. So we do need to be quite careful and try to try to take advantage of the design and the development work that our old friend Elon and his minions has put in here. So what um, has been done now 
is, is to me uh, is to me quite brilliant and it's just pure effort this stuff is it's repetitive it's boring um, it doesn't get the clicks it doesn't get the 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 fame or the fortune uh, but it's um, it, it brings us a lot closer so I'm gonna zoom us in here actually what I'll do first of all so I'll show you a little 3d view here so this is our PCB so this is uh, KiCad this is the 3d viewer in KiCad which is really good um, it's something I'm very much um, enjoying so basically what we're going to see here is this lower part of the board here where you see these six um, ICs these are the gate driver chips and here we have our each individual leg so this is the B phase high the B phase low the C, the C phase low and the C phase high and so on and each uh, chip here is responsible for controlling one half of these legs so <clears throat> it's not just a case of um, where we take the chip and we just connect a few pins to the gates and the source pins and that's it there's an awful lot of extra work that goes on in here with various passive and active components that take the gate drive signals from the driver chips and basically pump the gates of our fancy silicon carbide MOSFETs so what's happened here as you will see is that this part here in the middle has now filled out with all of these parts now I'm not gonna get into the minutia of this at this stage because this video will already be long enough um, but probably the biggest things you're gonna see here is you'll see the gate resistors the push-pull transistors and a lot of the kind of little control parts that go around this now how this has been done is that each component that you see here the reference is the same as on the model 3 uh, logic board even the positioning of the part is going to be pretty much the exact same the positioning of vias test points all that will be basically reproduced from uh, the Tesla board and when it comes down to some of these parts it can be a real struggle to identify the actual part so there's a lot of work to have to be taken off they have to be analyzed um, before we can kind of glean what data um, or sorry what uh, component and what specification that these are but just for me right now um, seeing this area here filled out is quite amazing I'm I'm still just like looking at this um, now the other two legs here will basically be the exact same um, set up just with different component IDs and so on now again as per the Tesla board uh, it is a double-sided surface mount board so if we flip over we'll see here on the back um, that we have some parts here on the back now it will be my intention and that of the uh, person that's been doing this work that once we get it um, worked out we will relay out um, these components uh, and make it a single-sided surface mount uh, board for ease of manufacture um, yes I know you can argue there are certain ad advantages to having certain parts here on the back because they're going to be nearer the pins and have less inductance and so on in the, the tracks uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but the main aim at the minute now would be to get all the components off the back but well 
it, it's really only going to be around the gate driver stuff because the rest of this uh, design is going to be quite different. So where we're going to be, where we're going to be seeing things very similar to the Tesla board is going to be around the gate driver section here. So basically, um, our chips and our extra gate driving parts in here now for those of you may be interested in such things we have a little schematic beginning to take shape and this is the part now that you've just been looking at on the 3d viewer this for example is the high side uh, here and the low side um, down underneath it but it's certainly a little bit different um, it's certainly different to the examples given in the data sheet for this gate driver the STGAP um, now one of the again one of the big advantages to have someone else doing this is that I can go in here and kind of double check and verify that we have um, you know not made a wrong assumption or a wrong connection um, in how some of these uh, parts connect together and that's just one of the real advantages of having more than one person uh, working on a, pro a project such as this because it is most definitely it's a it's a body of work um, but as I said, the advantage is once we get this part right, once we have this schematic um, for one of these legs right, it's just a question of rinse and repeat then for the other two and then hopefully just uh, be a case of updating the component uh, references in here. So not simple but um it's you know it, it's not like we've six completely different circuits in there to um to take apart now if we then come and have a look at our board um this is again not it be, because it's a single pc P, pcb where having to deal with high voltage um, and micro signals, um, low level signals on the, the same board. So one of the most interesting things here again that we have is that we can see here how the layering is done in the board and how the, um, how the planes are laid out now at the minute this is set as a four layer pcb and i would again think that that's where we should be able to to go here but unlike um a more traditional design whereby we can pour a plane across an entire layer and call that ground or call it five volts or something like that we're not going to be able to do that here because we're going to be using the layers um, for different purposes so there's things like if we look here in the middle of the PCB you've got all of these resistors and they're used uh, to discharge the high voltage bus via this uh, MOSFET here so these components here will be on um, let's say the same layer even here in this little part that we end up might using for a, a for a more micro power setup over here um, but again having someone working on this stuff and been able to see now how the the layers work and the spacings and the clearance distances and all this kind of thing in here is super critical uh to be able to see that and um just seeing the yeah just seeing all of the kind of the vias matching up and the component references matching up here is um yeah i'm 
<laughs> I'm I'm I am super impressed uh, with this. So it's definitely given me uh, much needed um, enthusi enthusiasm. Let's say to get back into this uh, project as well. So yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna I think it's it's gonna work out now. Just for those of you that may also be um, looking at the board, what I would say is from here, let's say from the midway point down, we'll be pretty much duplicating the Tesla gate drivers and the current sensor connections and so on here. And probably some stuff around the, uh, the discharge system. Um, but that will be where we're going to break away then from the Tesla um, system that's on this board. Uh, we'll have our own uh, power supply design here, not using this horrible thing. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the magnetics uh, side here because we are going to need one of the biggest problems. Um, we're recreating a board like this is the magnetics now we're lucky enough here um, in so far as that there's really only one that we need to worry about and that's this transformer here and that's used to uh, make up the four as uh, plus suppl supply lines um, that we need for or sorry the four isolated uh, supply lines that we need for our gate drivers because we need um, the high side needs its own each uh, leg on the high side needs its own plus and minus isolated um, supply so that's three of them and then the low side can share um, all three of those can share the same uh, high and low side uh, power so once we've this part uh, worked out um, what I am probably going to do is I'm probably going to make a one of my kind of um, breakout board sort of things here so we'll make a board that's half the size of this guy here um, mightn't even bother with the current sensor so it might only be enough to just sit onto the transistors and give us a header here where we can um, connect to our gate drivers supply external power to them and check that they're actually switching on and off and uh, you know that we've got this part right so that's a little bit further down the road but I'm just kind of thinking out, la out loud here um, then we can we can come along and do our um, the rest of our open inv inverter system on here. Now, I will be using two um, STM32 micros on this. It'll be the standard F103 for uh, motor control, but then I'm going to put an F105 on there. And its job is going to be doing things like configuring and communicating with the gate drivers because uh, they are SPI programmed and controlled. Um, I have captured um, SPI communication logs uh, for them and Colin Ki uh, Kidder decoded all that and that's all up on the GitHub now so we know how to program the gate drivers for things like dead times, uh, limits, um, temperatures, all that good stuff in there. So I'll be offloading that from the F103 onto a um, onto a 105. Um, but other than than that, it'll really only be the power supply section. Uh, that'll have to be designed then to provide our power rails. So, um, yeah, it's now back in, back on the bench per se. Um, I, I just can't stop looking at this because it's just, um, 
yeah it's just great to see it uh really appreciate um folks that have assisted not just with this project but with a lot of the other pro projects that i have done and i'm doing um but having another person involved in it um just really helps out so much um it can be uh, it depends i guess on my mood but it, it can be somewhat um disheartening sometimes to you know to see such little interest in um making uh things more accessible to folks um, i'm one of these people that i i kind of have a very strong belief that I have a, a very strong belief in the whole right to repair thing, the right to understand what it is that you have here that's moving your car down the road. That's um, you should be able to, you know, even if you can't do it yourself, you should have the the information there accessible to you uh, to um, to get someone to be able to do that in your locale. Um, so. Yeah, the Model 3 um, project for the drive units is most certainly not um, dead as some corners of the internet like to think. Um, it's alive. This part of it has now gotten a very welcome boost um, and the software project is still ongoing as well uh, so we'll definitely get ourselves to a open source um, control of the drive unit um, I know that it's probably going to get um, mentioned as well so I'll just wrap up by saying that yes there are commercial systems um, available uh, that can run your drive unit today without any uh, modifications ne necessary and um, I don't have any experience of those myself I don't have any involvement with them uh, they're not my cup of tea but from what I see they most certainly work um, so if you need something today um, then that's really the only option available to you um but as i say myself and a few other um crazy but somewhat dedicated souls are working on uh making this more accessible so this video is already reaching epic levels of boredom um so i'd better stop waffling and uh let you folks get back to those funny cat videos so um Put some links in the description. There'll be a link in the description to the GitHub uh, repo uh, for all information uh, relating to not only the hardware project that I've been working on, but also the software project. Um, so if you have any kind of thoughts or core questions relating to that, I'm pretty much sure that you'll be, be, be able to find uh, the, the info that you need there. So also if you want to get on board with this project uh, by all means um, do let me know um, it's as i said it's not sexy it's not uh, gonna get clicks it's it's not gonna um, enrich you with vast quantities of gold bullion but um, it will uh, it, it does bring its own level of satisfaction so all right folks that's enough for me talking at the computer and um, hopefully in the next episode we'll actually be able to do some car work for you. Um, Alright, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs down. Uh, don't share or subscribe or do anything crazy like that and for crying out loud do not support me on patreon or paypal using the links below because then i'm going to take your hard-earned cash and spend it on stupid projects like this so until next time happy component iding